All his life, Carl Brenders has been fascinated by the colors, the light, and the textures that can be found only in the natural world. His life's work, as one of the most gifted wildlife artists of our time, has been to use his considerable gift to faithfully and painstakingly capture nature as it truly is. The rich and seemingly endless variation of plants and animals. The ever-present sense of danger lurking nearby. The obligation to share the planet with humans. And the relentless threats to survival that such relationships impose. The artistry of Carl Brenders gives us windows into wilderness with which to clearly see the natural world that surrounds us. Carl maintains his home and his studio in his native Belgium, where he lives with his wife, Paula. A quiet, rural existence provides the right ambience for him to do his work, a respite from the at times hectic pace imposed by constant travel, from art shows and field trips. Here in his country's studio home, he has created a peaceful place, an artist's place where he can breathe life into his paintings. In the 1960s, Carl worked as the art editor on a series of children's nature books that were very popular and which were translated into 12 languages. He earned international attention when a Paris-based publisher commissioned Carl to produce their Secret Life of Animals series. Carl had been a fine commercial artist whose mastery of technique permitted him to move with ease among different media. But the fundamental skill that marks the artistically gifted from the talented amateur, the ability to draw, had been in his grasp from the time he was a very young boy. During the Second World War, air raids forced Carl and his family to huddle in the scant safety of their cellar. There, in the half-light, he would draw everything he saw on scraps of paper and cardboard. I started painting mostly with the detailed pencil drawing after having made several sketches for the position of the animal. I transferred this pencil drawing to my illustration board. I always complete the background first, leaving the space of the animal wide. I need the white virgin paper for my watercolor technique. I first painted fur details in a dark watercolor with a normal brush. It looks then like a kind of pen drawing. On top I airbrush with watercolor, too dark on purpose, so that with the gouache I can work from dark to light. With the gouache I create the real details. I cover the background with a mask of cellophane, putting weights on it so that it cannot be blown away with the pressure of the airbrush. The airbrush work is only to create a dark base which I can work on with gouache, an opaque watercolor. Nothing of the airbrush work remains visible. Carl has laid the foundation for his work. The subject has been sketched, the airbrushing completed, he removes the weights and cellophane mask. Now come weeks of fine brushwork. And this detailed work is where Carl's virtuosity shines through. It is the hallmark of a Carl Brenders painting. Entitled Shadows in the Grass, this painting symbolizes Carl's hope for a bright future for what he believes is one of the most magnificent creatures in the North American wild.
The work captures the taut intensity of an instant in time for two young cougars. The faithful attention to each stone, each hair, each blade of grass is typical of what Carl Brenders seeks to achieve in all of his work. It can only be achieved through personal experience and careful field work. And this was actually the first place where I landed. We came from Salt Lake City with a small plane and we flew into Jackson Hole. And when I saw the Snake River and the Tetons, and I knew behind that is Yellowstone, a park that I, I read already so much about, uh, it was a very special thing to me. And when I discovered it, and I could do a trip in Yellowstone, it was just a fairy tale. So all those small mammals and big mammals and everything was so tame, you could come so close, what you never can do in Europe or in Belgium, because there's hunting. Here's no hunting since 70 years or more. And uh, so, uh, this is really a wonderful place. It's not only the animals and everything, but it's the scenery, it's the, the light, it's the, the, the magic feeling that you get here that, that, that makes me trying not missing it any, any fall season because it's the fall season, the Indian summer, it's the most beautiful season here because of the colors and the changing colors and, and the lower sun and the warm uh, sh the shadows and everything that makes this park really beautiful place. I see things in detail, I see every detail. I, I like texture a lot, and so I don't call it hyper-realism, I call it just, just painting nature. I see nature like that. I, I enjoy uh, little rocks, I enjoy mosses, lichens, I enjoy the color combination of everything, and it's too beautiful to leave it loose. That's my opinion about it. It's so beautiful, not only the colors, not only the light falling in it, but all the texture. Uh, it's, 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 it's fascinating, the texture of everything. Carl believes that nature finds expression for her beauty in endless ways. It is his passion to capture and honestly reflect that beauty in his work, as this selection of limited edition butterflies and moths attests. Even with nature's most intricate handiwork, his artistry remains faithful to the truth, and that truth is indeed beautiful. Carl is a keen student of nature the world over. His deep love of the vast North American wilderness and the creatures that inhabit it is the reason his field trips to the United States and Canada have become more frequent. He makes numerous sketches of the same subject in different positions, in different backgrounds, and different light. In this way, he develops the right composition for each work. Pieces of a larger painting are, in reality, little vignettes pieces of a bigger puzzle that Carl fits together or blends to make a larger work. Though his art comes first, Carl Brenders is a committed conservationist. He believes he has a duty to raise public awareness about such issues as disappearing habitat, the threat posed by pollution and overhunting. Nevertheless, in much of his work, in this series of family portraits, for example, he tries to convey a sense of hope for the future, of the never-ending cycle of life, of nature's continuity. He has sought what is precious and has captured it in watercolor for the rest of us to wonder and marvel at. Of all the wild families, wolves form the strongest bond because they remain a family for life. Carl has a special place in his heart for wolves for whom he feels a deep respect.
Through this painting called One to One, Carl has reintroduced the wolf to its former range in Yellowstone National Park. He understands how precariously some species have clung to survival, how close they came to being lost forever through man's arrogance and greed. And he is determined that we should not take them for granted again. There's no question of copying photographs. You combine, you take a lot of things. You take uh, the background apart. You have something in the zoo, but the background in the zoo is not nice. But you have the animal. And if it fits with the light of your photograph, you can combine several photographs. You take a photograph of a stone. You take a photograph of plants. Because I don't like to make mistakes, I have to have American plants. They have to, have to grow or they're in the west or in the east or it's in, in September, or it's in May, it's all different. The animals are different in May than they are in September. So you have to pay attention for all those things. So you combine all those photographs, and uh, it's just to see the texture, and the fur, and the anatomy also, because that's a very difficult. When you work so realistic, when you work impressionistic, it's a lot, more, it's a lot easier. But you don't, you don't have to worry about texture and hairs and so. And then you, you give impressions of anatomy. But when you have to, to do all that, that stuff, then it's very difficult, all these anatomical uh, forms. So it's very important that you have photographs, believe me. And I think most of the wildlife artists, they use them. When I did Power and Grace, I felt like standing there with those deer, ready to run away. And I felt that I was, my feet were wet, because this is wetland uh, scenery, and those deer like to be there. Uh, they're standing a little bit in shade of a tree, and it creates depth. The one in the front is a little bit darker than the two other ones there in the light. There's also an element of space, because that one uh, has his ear turned to the back, and it creates a little bit of feeling of space. It listens to, to some danger probably in the background. Uh, the buck, I had a young buck with uh, only two points on his antlers. I had to, to make the body more important uh, of my reference and give it the head of a nice adult. I really love uh, to paint thistles. Thistles is really enjoyable. It's a, a very nice texture and you see them about anywhere. Uh, I got my references in, I think, all over the United States. A thistle is a wonderful thing in any season, when it flowers and when it forms seeds. It's a very nice addition to a scene when you can do that. When I was in Alaska, after the oil spill, uh, I met a very nice man. He was a doctor and he created uh, an eagle rehabilitation center. And uh, he had one eagle that uh, lost a wing, he saved, he saved about 25 eagles from the oil spill. One of those eagles lost a wing, it got stuck in the oil. And uh, he made a very beautiful poem about that eagle. And uh, he called it the one wing's gift. This eagle was a very healthy eagle. And he used him as a donor of blood to save the other eagles. And uh, that poem was so beautiful that I thought this I want I want to paint this eagle and give him his wing back and that's what I did in that painting now he will be la he will be able to fly again in my painting and uh, it was quite evident because I like Yellowstone so much that I used the background uh, of all the scenery that I see in Yellowstone uh, in Yellowstone you see so many beautiful old uh, still standing dead trees. They get full of mosses and lichens, and they have such a nice texture and colors in it that it's, it's a, a real good thing to put the bees in the background. It works very well with the color of the eagle and the white of the head, the yellow of the rocks, and then the color of those trees, the bluish background, the depth, it's like in a canyon. You see the other side of the canyon. That dead tree in front of it, that made a beautiful composition. 
and uh, the eagle doesn't have a very a normal position because eagles mostly don't sit on rocks. This one saw a prey on that rock, just came out of the canyon, landed on the rock, missed its prey, and just is looking in a second how he can do another attempt. That's what happened in that painting. Field trips are an essential and enjoyable part of Carl's research. The North American wilderness has proven to be an inexhaustible source of interesting subjects for his work. The variety of habitats, the plants and animals are what keep him coming back to this part of the world from his native Belgium. The relative abundance of large mammals that are so accessible continues to delight him. Here he has ample opportunity to study them, to watch them hunt or forage for food, to watch them move, even to get close enough to smell them, to, in his words, let them get into his skin. And sometimes those encounters have been quite dramatic. The popularity of wildlife art has steadily grown over the past several years. Those who collect it tend to be very knowledgeable. They also demonstrate preferences for certain artists. Among them, Carl Brenders enjoys a large international following. He has established himself as one of the world's premier wildlife artists, and demand for his work grows steadily each year. So actually I made a sketch of th these four and that was only young foxes. But one of the young foxes turned a little bit to adult and the expression was very good. So I brought me on the idea to make the painting bigger and then I got the opportunity to paint the tail also, which is nice. And uh, I added paper on my sketch, was stick together and things, was a mess, <laughs> but it gave me the idea. So I thought, but when I paint the mother, I made this bigger, I kept the expression, made it bigger. And then I thought the mother fox mostly has five or six kids, so um, kids or cubs. So I added these two, and I added all the background, what gave me a lot more work. But uh, it, was, it was nice, and what I wanted really uh, was uh, a mother fox with uh, cubs. She just fed them, she's happy because it's actually it's a young fox and it's her first litter. And uh, the young foxes are fit now and they are ready to sleep, they are not playing anymore, so she has some quiet moments. And it's a nice day in front of the den, so it's actually it's kind of a family, a family portrait. I call it full house because it's a house full of children and just you can imagine when all this has to go into the den, it's really a full house. So that's what I wanted with this painting. And when it was finished I thought, well it needs something special because just regular old fox colors. So I thought when I add a tongue here, it gives her a happy feeling, it's okay. And she cleaned the small foxes a little bit 
So that's why I added the tongue. Some people like it, but some people do not. But that's not my business. So I like it very much, and it was a nice detail. So it was very nice. I enjoyed also very much the den. That's what I wanted already a long time, foxes in front of a den. So and I have friends. I have a friend, and he has young foxes at home. So that helped me a lot to do this painting. The rest is just imagination, and it's a result of a lot of field work also. A book of Carl Brander's work is now available to collectors and others who are interested in wildlife art. Though his popularity has grown among art collectors in Europe and Asia, Carl's largest and continually growing following is in the United States and Canada, where many more people are interested in wildlife art that allows us to see through windows into wilderness.